This body cam footage shows moments before Lindsay Shiver sent a picture of her husband to a hitman with the words, kill him. Lindsay and Robert seemed to have everything that most people could only dream of, a loving marriage, wealth, and a beautiful family. But as you already know, things are not always as they appear to be. We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house, it's hell on earth, as you can imagine. Okay. Um, but anyway, woke up this morning, we have travel plans to leave, mm -hmm. and he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys, he starts, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car, tells me he owns the car, he owns the rights to it. Just got super aggressive and that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before and I'm just not. Yes, Lindsay and Robert's marriage had turned toxic. And during a bitter divorce, Lindsay would make one decision that would end up costing her everything. But how did it get this bad for this once happy couple? Why did she want Robert dead? And how did the police discover her heinous plan? Let's explore the shocking case of the cheerleader who hired a hitman to kill her millionaire husband. Lindsay Shiver was born on October 28, 1986 to Cecilia and Andy Shirley. She grew up in Dothan, Alabama before relocating to Thomasville. Growing up in the South, Lindsay participated in many beauty pageants, winning the title of Miss Houston County in 2005, and finishing as a second runner-up in the National Peanut Festival pageant the same year. In 2006, she enrolled in Auburn University to study elementary education in hopes of becoming a teacher. She had a pretty epic experience there, with parties, friends, and extracurricular activities. She was in the cheerleading squad and took workout classes during her free time. It was in one of these classes that she met her future husband, Robert Shiver, who played on the university's football team. They began dating and almost immediately as soon as Lindsay graduated, they got married and began what would seem to be their happily ever after life together. They had everything that money could buy, including a private jet. Blessed with three beautiful boys, they actually seemed to be the perfect all-American family. They lived a pretty lavish lifestyle in a big, beautiful mansion, socialized in nice, exclusive places, and vacationed in the Bahamas, where Robert's family owned a vacation home. They basically had everything money could buy, including a private jet. As you can already tell, this lifestyle was not something new to Robert, as his family was already super rich. His dad, Alan Shiver, had served as the CEO of the billion dollar company, Flower Foods, before stepping down in 2019. So when his NFL career tanked, it was easy for Robert to get a backup plan. And the backup plan was to become the VP of an insurance company called Senior Life, where he made a ton of money. This meant that Lindsay could be a stay-at-home mom and not have to worry about money. Lindsay would often share glimpses of their happy family on her Instagram. In one post from June 2022, she shared a photo of her and her family in the Bahamas writing, I'm a real Bahama mama. In another post, she shared a photo of one of her sons saying, living the soccer mom life. From the outside looking in, Robert and Lindsay seemed to have a happy and loving relationship. But as time would reveal, a storm was brewing in the background. It's not clear when the affair started, but in early 2023, Lindsay was reportedly seeing a 28-year-old guy named Terrence Bethel, who worked at a bar near the Shriver's Bahamas home. A friend of Lindsay's has come out to say that Lindsay has been bored with her marriage for a long time. She described her friend as a firecracker, saying, I thought he was exciting. He was different. He was a smooth guy. He likes to socialize with the tourists and the people with second homes here. The friend went on to say that Lindsay was living a double life. This Georgia housewife with the lovely kids and the Bahamas bad girl. The friend said that it reached a point where Lindsay was not even trying to keep the affair a secret. A friend said it's common knowledge that they're dating. It was like a crazy love affair between them. Robert also knew that his wife of 13 years was seeing someone else and decided that he had had enough. 
An article by the New York Post reported that Robert hired an expensive private investigator to follow Lindsay to the Bahamas and take pictures of her and her lover. On one occasion, the PI took pictures of Lindsay with a man who turned out to be an innocent manager from a local bar. Sources say that Robert confronted the shocked man who said he had no idea what he was talking about. The PI was eventually able to get pictures of Lindsay and Terrence, and according to the New York Post, Robert approached Terrence and sarcastically thanked him for confirming his suspicion, saying, thanks for taking care of my wife. He filed for divorce in April of 2023, in which he accused Lindsay of adulterous conduct and said that his wife was not entitled to alimony since she is able-bodied and able to work. On top of that, he requested joint legal and primary custody of the three children, as well as possession of the couple's home, valued at $2.5 million, furniture, and car. He also asked for an order restraining Lindsay from harassing him. Of course, Lindsay was not going down without a fight. The day after Robert filed for divorce, she filed her own divorce paper to counter his. In her filing, she said that any extramarital relationship occurred while the couple was separate and was legally condoned by the husband. She accused Robert of being physically, emotionally, and mentally abusive towards her, saying that he would even abuse her in front of her kids. She asked the court to grant her a restraining order, shielding her from the said abuse because even after installing locks on the doors inside the home, she was still not safe. As for the alimony and marital assets, she said that she was entitled to them because she was dependent on her husband's support and had incurred debts during the marriage, which she was unable to pay on her own. She also alleged that Robert moved $98,000 out of their joint account into his private account and blocked her use of the couple's private jet as a means of punishing her by removing her from their overall expensive lifestyle. She said that Robert had even cut off internet access in their mansion by stopping his automatic utility payment. You can tell up to this point that this was going to be a very messy divorce. And you're not mistaken. Within a short time, things would go from bad to absolutely horrifying. Authorities would later release body cam footage showing just how ugly things had gotten between these two. In one of the footage recorded on April 30th, 2023, Lindsay is seen talking to two officers about a custody dispute with Robert. Even though the two were still living together and their divorce was yet to be finalized, Lindsay expressed her concern that Robert had taken the kids from her and planned to hand them over to his parents. Lindsay had gone over to her in-law's house for the kids when the officers showed up. My in-laws are in the parking lot right there uh -huh. in the white Lexus. Yeah. I've tried to call them. This is my attorney on the phone uh -huh. um, and have not been able to get a hold of them. But that's what I was calling for, was for y'all to come meet with me because I'm trying to meet up with my husband right now. So what are y'all trying to do? That's the 46 dollars. I'm relocating to the compliance location in BP West. The divorce. He yes. just had my kids with my family all weekend and I respected that. I didn't go up there with my family. On the way back, this morning they were in Wiggum 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. 23 they were times home, home, And then I get the message this that one. they're dropping, he's dropping them with his parents who have no rights. Okay. So, as a witness for me, that's why I called y'all to mm -hmm. meet me at his parents' house. You called? I called. I was okay. the first one to call. I don't know. I, I assumed like the planet was, and they said the white Lexus. No, I called first. Okay. The officers told Lindsay that they had received a call from her mother-in-law, who accused her of harassing and threatening them. But Lindsay denied it, saying that she had called the police first, and that she only wanted to see her children. So they called and said that you were following them and harassing them, and that's, that's why... That's not the so, truth. I was just trying to see where they were going to meet my kids, if I needed to call you to tell you it was the gas station or the house. What time did you call this bus? Let's see. Well, a lot of people this morning now at 1238. 20 okay, so that was probably the, that might have been the original call then. 
I don't know. There's no, I mean, there's no crime here, so we're not. But where are my kids? Uh, I don't know. It must be, they got to be with your husband. If, uh, Which is what, just frolicking around and can until he drops them with them? She said that she had tried calling Robert multiple times, but he was ignoring her calls. So okay. you think your husband, has husband them. still has them? But he, won't answer. Them but he won't answer. Okay. When was he supposed to bring them? This morning. Oh, yeah. No one's answering the phone. Yeah. Where has your husband been staying? Oh, at my house. Okay. It's a lovely situation. So he just isn't home? He hasn't come home yet? Mm -mm. Okay. I'll try my son, who I tried earlier and had talked to, and he told me they were in Wigan. But now I'm sure Robert's got them not answering the phone. She accused her in-laws of having mental issues, saying that they were not fit to take care of the kids and they had no right to take them. I'm pretty sure they said threatening them, but if you didn't talk to them, then... I didn't talk to them at all. They were saying that you were following them, obviously, and that you got a gun, which no. isn't illegal. It doesn't no, matter. I don't, It though. doesn't matter, though. But I don't. And... Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my so, God. she... Mother-in-law, something car. is she's freaking out apparently. She's but she's hypomanic. But she has a mental issue. All yeah. three of the people in the car have mental issues. Don't they? Yeah. They don't need my kids. Yeah. Yeah, they're saying the same thing. Ten four eight four five. Georgia Tech Tango Golf. Mike five one three. Yeah, five one three nine. White car. Hyundai SUV. That's none of our business. All I'm saying is that's that's the call we got. That's why we but showed they up. Mind, yeah, yeah. That they don't have a right to. The officers also talked to Lindsay's mother-in-law, who wanted to know whether they had found the gun in Lindsay's car. Before. Oh no. well, I, I didn't search her car. Enough, but I asked her about it. She said she did. When officers told her that Lindsay had not really broken any law, the mother-in-law said that she was nervous to go home because of what Lindsay might do. You guys can go about your business, okay? If she's following you or you feel like she's threatening you in any way from moving forward, you can call 911 again. But what we have right now, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do, okay? This whole thing's been documented and recorded, so you ain't got to worry about that, okay? We just don't have nothing. We're not doctors. There she is, right there. That's not her. That's somebody else. Uh, that's somebody else. Makes me nervous. I'm nervous. Makes me not want to go home. Though. Yeah. She's left. I don't know her. You yeah. don't know her like you no, know. I don't. I don't know. Her. So, so it's, it's not a it, it's not a good environment. It's a toxic environment. And it's, I well, I mean, it, considering well. not just you, but her own mom saying the same thing, I'd be inclined to believe. The mother-in-law also accused Lindsay of being mentally unstable, saying that they were afraid that she had harmed herself when she didn't pick up their calls earlier that day. Get back home and call the police off and tell them what's happening. The people. Okay. Well, we, you know, we are. We moved in with my daughter who has cancer. She lives right behind Robert and Lindsay. We were headed to where our big home is up for sale because Robert was going to bring the kids and let us see him because she, Lindsay was not answering their phone calls all day today. So they thought she killed herself, to be honest, and had taken an overdose or something. In this next footage, recorded on July 16th, 2023, Lindsay and Robert got into a fight over their private jet which they both wanted to use to go to the Bahamas for vacations. Lindsay called the police after Robert reportedly got physical with her. She's inside now. Okay. So what, what's going on? Y'all are separated or what, what's the, the deal? We have filed for divorce. Okay. Living in the same house, it's hell on earth as you can imagine. Okay. Um, but anyway, woke up this morning. We have travel plans to leave. Mm -hmm. And he's insisting that I don't go. Okay. And then I have my keys. He starts, moves me out of the way, starts trying to unload my car. Tells me he owns the car. He owns the rights to it. Just okay. got super aggressive. And that's when I called immediately because he's been physical before and I'm just not. Okay. Not so, doing that. So are you just wanting to leave? 
Or is he supposed to be going with you? Yeah, we're supposed to be going with our kids. Okay. All right. Um, That's what I was asking dispatch, like what y'all can do if there's even, but of course now he's inside acting. I mean, I don't know what it is that you want us to do. I mean, if y'all have filed for divorce and y'all are going on a vacation, other than telling him he needs to calm down, I don't personally recommend you go on a vacation if together if if there's an issue like that and y'all have filed for divorce. I mean, it's obviously a hostile situation. So, is there a way that you can go without him? or? I mean, the best thing, what we're going to do is tell y'all that y'all need to separate. I mean, has he put his hands on you that, you know, have y'all been physically aggressive today? I mean... No, just besides him moving me out of the way of my car to get to it. Okay, what do you mean he moved you out of the way? Like, push me out of the way so he could get to my car and start unloading it. Okay. We're going to need to talk to him then. After talking to Lindsay, the officer went and spoke to Robert, who told her that he had planned a trip with the kids to the Bahamas, while Lindsay had planned to go to Key West with her boyfriend. Lindsay later changed her mind and decided to go to the Bahamas with her boyfriend, but Robert would not let her use the plane. Okay, so so what's going on this morning? So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip plan with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but she just said you're going. I, that was to Key West. <laughs> I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas this morning. Our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. But I am too, and by the way. when we land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to our house. And I told her I'm not supporting that. And you're not getting on the airplane. That can mess with the kids' heads. And it's just something we're not going to do. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to the airplane. She, on paper, owns 25 of that. And majority owner, the, or owner, the, or the other 50% owner, and myself are both in agreement to not have her on the airplane. So 75% says we don't want you on the plane. That doesn't mean you get aggressive, push me out of the way, push start unloading my car. Push you out of the way. Yes, That's at the back of the car. Okay, Lindsay, I did not push you or anything. He doesn't want me to go. I raised the back to grab my kids' suitcases. So With a locked leave. car. So we can leave. That's all it is. Okay. I'm going to tell you both, like I told you a minute ago, y'all are filed for divorce, okay? In situations like this, the best thing that we always recommend is y'all separate. Don't just separate from each other. You don't need to be going on vacation together if you file for divorce and it's obviously a volatile situation. That's right. That, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to, to put it other than that, okay? Even with the officers there, the two continued fighting over travel plans and the children's suitcases. None of them was ready to back down. I, I can't stop her. I can't say you can't go wherever the heck it is you want to go. I can't tell you, you can tell. That, that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. We're here because of acts of violence, to calm the situation. That's what we're here to do, okay? I, I can't, I, I, I can't control y'all going on vacation. Don't recommend going on vacation together, but that's just my personal uh, just I mean, an hour on airplane. Just okay. Do you have any identification? Okay, can I get that please? No, since since I own this vehicle and it's solely in my name. It's marital property right now. She still has access to okay, it. Okay, I understand she has access to it, but mm -hmm. can I not get my kids' suitcases out of the back? Yes. You can get your children's property that's out of I'm it. Up. So he can get the kid's stuff out of my car. It's marital property. And I don't have any paperwork saying that he's not allowed access to the children's property. He's just not able to move me out of the way to get it. You can tell that the officers were already fed up with this back and forth and told them that they needed to separate and not go on vacation together. But clearly, neither of them was listening. I mean, if it's this type of situation, y'all just need to separate. I mean, just don't, don't be around each other if it's going to be like this. But how do we do that with three kids? All right, what do you have to do with cops? So now 
So now I'm able to get my kids stuff back out of the vehicle. Okay, why are we doing this though? Why why do you need to do that? Well, because he's taking my kids. So we're gonna go back and so we're gonna stand here while y'all go back and forth moving suitcases back and but forth that's between what I'm cars. Saying, so that's what's just happened. If that's what you feel like you need to do, then then I mean, then by all means do it. But you understand it? It's making the situation worse, and you're doing it in front of the children now. I, I don't. Our plans have been the same for weeks. Other than the footage, there are some 911 calls that Robert made during this period that some people find to be really weird. In one of the calls from February 20th, 2023. Robert asked the police to escort him home because he was concerned about his wife's behavior. My wife just got back from out of town and I believe that we are heading down the road of getting divorced. She just cut my cell phone off um, from Verizon. She called Verizon and had my cell phone disconnected. So I'm calling on my mother's phone at the Verizon store because the only way I can get it back active is if she releases it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to go over to uh, our home, and with the way that she is behaving, I feel like she might try and call the police to try to set me up as soon as I get there. And I wanted to try to get out in front of it because I'm not a, a risk of, you know, doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to go to my house, and if I need to pack my stuff and leave, I can pack my stuff and leave. Um, but my kids are there, and, you know, I don't want it to be presented as she goes and screams bloody murder, calls the police, so I think to try to have me uh, carried off in a police car. In another call, Robert talks about a mysterious envelope with photos of his wife delivered to his home. He said that he had no idea who had taken the photos and was afraid that someone was stalking his wife. I do not have an emergency right now, um, but I was wanting to just kind of put you guys on notice of something that has is, is been kind of odd. Mm -hmm. Are you the right person to talk to or do I need to be transferred to a dispatch or what? This is dispatch. Okay, so the day at work, um, I had a letter delivered to me and it was a USB thumb drive. And it didn't have a return to sender address or anything. And so I plugged the thumb drive in and it had all these pictures of my wife on it from about two weeks ago when we were out of the country. <laughs> and the same thumb drive was delivered to my parents' house uh, about a mile away in an unmarked envelope. And it looks like, glancing through, that it was almost like a, a private investigator. But we have spoken with everybody that uh, we know, mm -hmm. and they've all confirmed that they they don't know what we're talking about. Okay. So I don't know if we have like a potential stalker, or uh, you know some some lunatic that's in town that has been mm -hmm. following my wife around. Okay. But we just wanted to let you guys know it, it might do, or we would like it if you guys could maybe, you know, just make a couple of uh, passes by our home tonight. We just kind of went through and checked the whole house ourselves. Um, okay, do you want to get a report as well? I don't think we need a report just yet because we don't, we're trying to find out more information on who took the pictures and we're, talking to some people that have some security cameras to see if we can get a picture of the individual first. Okay, were the pictures taken while you were out of the country or were they taken while you were here? They were taken while we were out of the country in the Bahamas. Now, this doesn't make sense to some people because of the reports that he had hired a PI to spy on his wife while in the Bahamas. In the months leading up to Lindsay's arrest, the couple had reportedly made half a dozen 911 calls. But still, no one would have expected the dark twist that this relationship would take. So after their fight on July 16th over the private jet, Lindsay reportedly sent a picture of Robert to Terrence with a text saying, kill him. 
Unfortunately for her, the message would land in the hands of the Bahamian police while investigating another unrelated case. So, on July 20th, the police in the Bahamas received reports that someone had broken into a local waterfront bar and ransacked the safe. Coincidentally, this was the same bar where Terrence worked. Police suspected that this was probably an inside job, so they began going through the employees' phones. And that's how they came across the incriminating message. On July 21st, Lindsay, Terrence, and another man named Farron Newbold Jr. were arrested on conspiring to commit murder. Farron was a structural engineer and an aspiring rapper who came from a prominent, well-respected family. It's not clear how he was connected to all of this, but the police said that they found messages between the trio that seemed to indicate that he was the one to be the hitman for hire. However, locals expressed their disbelief that he would be involved in something so heinous. One person said he comes from a good family, he has a good job, I've never known him to be involved in anything like this. When Robert found out about the plot, he went to the police the same day and told them that he feared for his life as well as that of his children. According to police, on July 21st, the 36-year-old's estranged husband, Robert Shiver, told authorities that he learned of what was a plot to murder him, saying he came to police out of fear for his life and the life of his children. Police arresting Shiver's estranged wife and two other alleged accomplices. Investigators searching their phones and saying they found a number of WhatsApp messages suggesting a plot. After their arrest, the three accomplices were flown from the island of Guana to the capital, Nassau, where the nation's only prison is located. This footage shows them being escorted by three officers to jail, and they all appear calm and relaxed and even seem to be smiling. They all maintained their innocence, with Terrence saying that the whole thing had been blown out of proportion, while Farron reportedly said that the case is not what it seems. While being interviewed by the police, Lindsay reportedly broke down and admitted to sending photos and the damning message, but she claimed she was not serious and was just venting about her bitter divorce. Lindsay was held in the notorious Fox Hill prison which has been known for all the bad things, including the high number of inmates who end up taking their lives. I mean, this is where the notorious go. This is where anyone from minimum security to maximum, people beg to be extradited from here. You use a bucket in this facility. You don't get phone calls in this facility. And this is where this um, beauty pageant, soccer mom, self-proclaimed TikTok star, this mom to those boys, and also this Georgia mother is behind bars tonight. Lindsay was in that prison for 19 days during which she was allegedly unable to change her clothes. One report even says that she had a 6,000 Cartier bracelet the entire time because no one in the prison could figure out how to take it off. Finally, her bail was set for $100,000, with some rumors going around that Robert had agreed to pay it. However, this has been dismissed by sources close to the case. Robert did say that he was not against her being released on bail, but he was not the one that actually posted it. Lindsay was released on August 9th, but was not allowed to leave the Bahamas while the case was in progress. As a part of her release condition, she was ordered not to contact her estranged husband or come within 100 feet of him. She was also to remain in her leased condo between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. and check in with local authorities three times a week. We are also hearing more details about her first check-in. Today, she went to the Cable Beach Police Station early this morning. Again, she spent 19 days in Fox Hill Prison, one of the most notorious prisons in the world. Now she's been released and today checking in, telling reporters it's been tough. I really can't say much right now on the advice of her attorneys. It's been hard. I can't speak about it. I'm sorry. Thank you for being respectful. The former Alabama beauty queen and mother of three also required to stay away from not only her husband but her kids not have contact with them and also no contact with her co-conspirators. Lindsay's co-conspirators were also released on a $20,000 bail each but what's interesting is they all retained the same lawyer and during their bond hearing Lindsay and Terrence were seen giggling and whispering 
and didn't seem to be the least bit bothered by the charges before them. As for Terrence Bethel, he was um, spending his time locking eyes with his lover, the alleged lover, and they were touching each other at times. She was giggling. They were looking into each other's eyes. They were all in court today, not speaking, except for with their attorneys whispering with each other, which they were allowed to do, and then answering the court saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. On December 21st, a judge in the Bahamas allowed Lindsay to travel to the U.S. over the holidays to see her young children. Robert had reportedly agreed to allow the children to have visitation with Lindsay that would be supervised by her parents. However, Robert reportedly broke the agreement saying that a child psychologist had advised him against it. Lindsay's lawyer filed a motion in court on January 3rd, 2024, asking the judge to compel Robert to let her see the kids. According to her lawyer, Lindsay was only allowed to speak to her children once over FaceTime on Christmas Day, but has otherwise been unable to reach them. Her lawyer wrote in the motion, it is believed that the children have been left in the care of babysitters for extended periods during the holidays when they could have been in Alabama with their mother and extended family members who love them. The children know the defendant, Lindsay, is at their grandparents' home in Alabama, and the youngest is especially distraught. The lawyer went on to say that Robert began withholding the children from Lindsay long before any of the developments in the Bahamas, when he was moving money around to various accounts beyond Lindsay's reach and was taking the children away from her care and refusing her contact with them. Robert had reportedly even gone to court to prevent Lindsay from returning to the US, telling a judge that he was thankful to be alive. He reportedly said, After reviewing the indictment, this was a situation close to happening. I am concerned for the safety of myself. Lindsay's trial is set to begin on July 1, 2024, in which the prosecution will have to prove that she meant to carry out her heinous plan and she was not just venting out to her boyfriend. What do you guys think about this case? Do you think Lindsay would have carried out her plans if the police hadn't caught her? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more content.